दिस इज आकाशवाणी इन द प्रोग्राम स्पॉट लाइट नाउ वी ब्रिंग यू एन इंटरव्यू विथ अनुराग जैन सेक्रेटरी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड हाईवेज ऑन द अचीवमेंट्स ऑफ द रोड एंड ट्रांसपोर्ट सेक्टर इंटरव्यूअर इज सोनू सूद द करंट गवर्नमेंट हैज लेड ग्रेट एम्फोसिस ऑन कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर ऑन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन द कंट्री एंड वन ऑफ द मेजर पार्ट ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर आर रोड which visitor to the country sees as soon as he or she lands in our country and to discuss uh, the advancements made in our road infrastructure in the last 9 years we have with us a secretary ministry of road transport and highways shri anurag jain anurag ji a warm welcome to you from akashwani thank you anurag ji to begin the discussion we would like to know from you that uh, we see a visible improvement in our roads how has this been brought about in the last 9 years what are the efforts that have been made by the government and what is the thought behind it infrastructure has been focus of the development in the last 9 years if you see the focus it actually is reflected in the fact that in the last 4 years the capital expenditure in the budget has been increased by 3 times and out of that almost 25% comes to this ministry so if you spend money but what is more important that the way we work the planning of the road infrastructure now takes place on pm gati shakti network which is basically a holistic whole of government approach it is just not creating a road it is creating a road for the improvement of the economy at the time of planning it is integrated planning it's planning keeping multi modality into account it is taking into account where the railway network goes how does it connect the ports how does it connect the industries how does it improve the logistic efficiency of the core components like coal movement the steel movement the food fertilizer movement cement movement so this holistic plan makes it doubly efficient so in these 9 years the pace of construction is improved total national highway in 2014 used to be about 91000 km now it is 145000 km but that is the declaration of national highways but what is more important out of that 91000 only about 20% 18000 km was four lane now that four lane is more than 30% 45000 km out of 145000 so four lane network has become two and a half times in last 9 years so that shows the way the ministry has worked on this the pace of construction on an average this used to be about 4000 4500 prior to 2014 now we are constructing upwards of 10000 kilometers every year so it has also become about two and a half times and more importantly here the lane configuration is much higher it's two and a half times in terms of length but if you take into account the lanes earlier most of the national highways used to be two lane now the average will be about three lane because lot of four lane highways are being made eight lane highways are being made so taking that into account the actual achievement will be much more so sir, how has the ministry of road transport and highways achieved a balance between preserving the environment ecology yet moving on the path of a sustainable development of road infrastructure at such a fast pace in the country when we have brought this policy of plantation into our system so in all highways we have a median which is used for plantation and at the two ends of the row we do the plantation so in the last 9 years we have actually planted about 3.8 crore plants and initially we saw that survival was an issue so we have switched over to the policy of planting tall trees which are already 2 years 3 years old plants so survival rate is much better our companies which used to work for us as contractors were not really tuned into plantation so we have taken being separate set of officers the forest officers who are supervising this work we have brought in circular economy like use of aggregates taken from the garbage so this way sustainability has come into our focus ministry of environment and forest they actually carried out a study on 2100 kilometers constructed by us in about 20 odd national highways which we recently constructed the result of study was really surprising even for us really wonderful results the total co2 emission caused during construction that takes into account the trees which were cut the petrol diesel which was spent on the machines while doing that work if that is 100 units the net saving of the carbon emission in the system is 2.7 times that in that study it came out because of unhindered traffic the increased speed of traffic there was a 42% saving in the diesel for trucks it is really the diesel gasoline 
on top of that even you look at the car the saving was about 8 to 10% and plus the new trees planted so all this put together is actually 2.7 times more than what we cause the destruction so it is a net carbon negative of a new construction program and rachi what has been the evolving role of technology in uh, building a world class road infrastructure as i said it starts from planning which i talked about pm gati shakti so the planning is holistic at the time of planning itself we are using the technology which is a space technology in the pm gati shakti network where it is not only the superimposition of various gis layers we also have what is we know what is there underground the geological layers are also there so the planning is much better for planning supervision we are using drone technology we are using drone photogrammetry for gramatry for surveys then we are using 3d machine control technology like on lucknow kanpur expressway the construction 3d machine control technology is being used and we have started using ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete so what it has done if it's a longish bridge it brings in the efficiency the spans can go longer and the strength of the bridge is much more we have started using in the glass fiber reinforced polymer bars so the latest technologies are being used we are using if you say fast tax earlier the toll used to be manual so now fast tax is 100% of our toll stations are fast tax based and on the basis of collections 98% of the money is through the fast tax so how has the toll collection improved due to all these innovations straight away the toll leakage goes out so 90% is based on fast tax so leakage has gone out from there in addition to that it has also given a lot of facility expedited traffic movement there was another study which so it is based on sample so when i say average it is again average of the sample before we introduced fast tag average time taken on a toll used to be 12 minutes 14 seconds now the average time taken after fast tag is 47 seconds so that is the comfort which has come to the drivers and if we talk of uh, asset monetization and even toll revenue collections uh, how has the fiscal situation improved for the ministry for road construction projects uh, how has the financing become easier one the new roads since they are quality roads and if it is on bot toll collection is being done by the construction agency but in other cases like epc ham hybrid annuity model we give it on toll separately so toll collection or the income for the system apart from toll we have also gone into invet we have gone into tot various other models of financing so this used to be around 4100 crore 10 years earlier in 2013 14 it has grown to more than 40000 crore now and by 28 29 it will grow to 1.25 lakh crore so that is a pace at which the income from this is growing and we are using all this income as investment say we got 40000 crore in 22 23 but the actual allocation from the budget was 2.58 lakh crore for the capital so that is the kind of investment which is being made what about the user amenities uh, that are being provided uh, because it is being seen that increasingly people are having a more and more pleasant experience while they are traveling on road so what are the efforts which are being made and also for the safety and security of the travelers the user amenities have become an integral part of our project planning now earlier we used to construct roads now we look at as i said holistically from economic point of view in addition to that we look at safe sustainable highways consider the passengers who are using our highway as our clients so if you take for example delhi mumbai express way which is under construction so what will it do that will explain almost everything what we are talking about the originally distance between delhi and mumbai is 14 24 km you take this road from here to jaipur to vadodara to mumbai the new express way which we have designed it's a direct as a crow flies going up to vadodara and then turns to bombay so the distance goes down by about 12% it is a access controlled eight lane express way so the time taken now is about the certain parts have already been completed so based on those averages it will be take you only just about 12 hours to reach from delhi to mumbai while today it takes about 24 hours now this 1200 km you will have 94 wayside amenities taking both sides on account 47 in 1200 km every 25 30 km you have a wayside amenity which is you have place to eat but in addition to that you have places for toilets separate for women toilets 
then you have breast feeding facilities separate for physically challenged people so all those things are taken into consideration then we have got advanced traffic management systems in these expressways so if a vehicle is going it is always under watch of some camera or other and using technology alerts would be generated so if there is a problem a vehicle stops on the way without reason it gets into an alert system if there is an accident then there will be immediate response there will be cranes the ambulance and information to the police and our toll operator people who are operating the road their team they'll reach immediately so god forbid we shouldn't have accidents but from the security point of view if there is an accident then we should be able to reduce the fatalities by immediate response many of the accidents actually happen because of a faulty road design so we are in also in process of identifying black spots so wherever accidents happen using the historic data we do a continuous analysis and all those black spots we are trying to correct them by either the engineering design or whatever is the best possible there are temporary measures there are permanent measures so we do that but design of the new highways we take precaution that there are no black spots those principles are followed in the design itself so no new black spots are created by us and so can you tell us about the flagship schemes launched by your ministry in the last 9 years like bharat mala sagar mala parvat mala industrial corridors and the special emphasis on northeast region now what have been the main guiding factors and key objectives of these schemes it is very holistic planning if you look at sagar mala it basically emanated from port connectivity because if you want to improve the logistic efficiency and thereby improve the economics of a country you need to have connectivity to the port so sagar mala ensured that you identify projects which are required for port connectivity then we looked at a strategic consideration for the security of the nation which is paramount so on the northern border on the northwestern border so roads were created to ensure that our forces can move in very quickly so that was also part of bharat mala whatever missing links were there they were identified another important thing which came out that we did a scientific study of the origin destination of goods movement for the logistic efficiency so that origin destination pair wherever they are important from the logistic point of view they were taken on priority so that what was created in there was bharat mala program so there was a focus on northeast so we have invested hugely into the northeast area if you look at the map of national highway in 2014 in northeast and you look at it now it is totally different lot of four lane highways have been created two lane have been converted into four lane if you look just as an example river brahmaputra there are only three bridges all were only two lanes so in a huge span of about 800 km you have only three connectivities across brahmaputra it actually divides assam into two parts and arunachal and assam on one side and rest of the states on other side we have converted two of those bridges into four lanes the third bridge is also getting converted into four lane and we in addition we have created three more bridges there then the international connectivity from tripura to bangladesh from manipur to myanmar getting the port connectivity so the logistics of the northeast is also changing very fast what is the vision uh, for the coming decades uh, we are already the second largest road network after us so what will be the main points of this vision it is basically the quality if you look at the length that also includes village roads so we are focusing on the logistic efficiency so we have created a blueprint for vision 2047 what honorable prime minister has talked about india being a developed country by 2047 so what kind of infrastructure we should have multimodal connectivity keeping that into mind we have created a blueprint like uh, if you look at 2014 there was only about 300 kilometers of expressways in the country it has already become 3000 km plus and the projects which are already approved and under implementation taking that into account this will reach 12000 but in the vision document this will reach about 45000 km which will happen in next 8 10 years we are working on that and ranji thank you so much for giving us a detailed insight into the various accomplishments and advancements in road infrastructure in the country thank you You were listening to an interview with Anurag Jain, Secretary, Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways, on the achievements of the road and transport sector. Interviewer was Sonu Sood. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. 